Hi, everybody. Eric Smith here, Race Review Online with the Prime Sports Network, live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. As you can see behind me, the trusty old Pagoda. Um, probably noticed we've done a lot of these videos the last few years, and we're back. It's the month of May. The weather's nice. Uh, the NTT IndyCar Series just wrapped up the first practice session on the 2.439-mile road course layout. Uh, that's where we're at this weekend. Uh, the GMR Grand Prix is the road course. Uh, I know the Indy 500 is kind of the, the big cookie, is what Pato Award calls it. That uh, that starts on Tuesday practice. Before we get there, uh, it's the road course. So uh, this is the 10th year. I got an article up online right now um, about the 10 years of this race. Has it accomplished what they want to accomplish with it? Um, because the only reason they brought it was because the crowds were kind of dwindling for practice days and qualifying days for the month of May, and it was a long month. And why do all this for basically four we- or well three weekends if you count qualifying? Um, and there wasn't just a lot of people, so they thought, let's get the attention. The race day for the 500 brings a lot of people, but let's focus the attention on the other races too. So if we have a road course race out here, it's state of the art, Formula One used it. Maybe we'll use that to introduce to uh, everybody that the NTT IndyCar Series is more than the Indy 500. Um, so I got an article up right now, um, posted it yesterday, talked to some drivers, um, look at the history, some trends, that kind of stuff about if this race 10 years in um, has done its job. Uh, but obviously, coming into this, uh, I got five things I'm watching uh, this weekend, and they kind of correlate with how we just saw the first practice session. So it kind of all works out together. Um, one of them is points. IndyCar doesn't have a cha- or, uh, playoff to get to a champion. It is season-long points. Uh, I know Formula One operates that way, but usually well a month ahead of the end of the season, the championship is already wrapped up, and it's just kind of foregone conclusion formalities to get through the season. NASCAR's got the playoff. IndyCar doesn't, and their points are always tight. 18 straight years we've gone to the final race with multiple drivers still alive to fight for the championship. This year looks to be no different. First through fourth right now in points are only separated by 11. So where that's big is if you start or let's say you win the race, that's 50 points that you get accumulated. Second place is 40. Well, if you lead a lap, which naturally you're going to, if you win the race, you got to lead at least one lap. That's an extra bonus point. That's 11 points right there. So fourth place could win or fourth in points, which this weekend is Scott McLaughlin. If he wins tomorrow, and the guy that's leading the points, Marcus Erickson, finishes second. Well, Scott McLaughlin's going to be leading the points. Just it's that small of a margin right now. Um, so that's where IndyCar, the points, is a big thing to watch coming into the month of May because it's always a big month. A lot of times drivers don't look at points to leave in here, but you can't afford to do that right now. Marcus Erickson, as I said, he's the defending Indy 500 champion. Granny didn't win the road course race last year. He leads with 130 points accumulated. Pato Award second, three points behind. Alex Pelos, third, nine points behind. Scott McLaughlin's fourth, as I mentioned, 11 points behind. And Romain Grosjean, he's fifth, 15 points behind. Where this, big, where this is big is Marcus Erickson has five top ten finishes here, but only one top five finish in that. So he's a top ten driver, but getting into the top five is hard for him to do. He was seventh in practice a little bit ago. Pato Ward, he started in the top five four times here. Three of the last four finishes, though. He's finished 12th or worse. He was just quickest in practice. So that both of those trends seem to be holding true. He might qualify well. Erickson might finish in the top 10, but neither of them may get in the top five. Alex Pelot, his three finishes, 27th, 18th, 10th in this race. Those are his last three. He was third in practice. Scott McLaughlin, three of his four career wins are on natural road courses. None of them happen here. He's got two top 10s and four tries here. His other two finishes, however, are 23rd and 20th. Pelot was third in practice. McLaughlin was fourth. Fittingly enough, that's where they are in points, too. So um, so what happens this weekend? Does that open the door? That's why I'm watching points. Romain Grosjean, I just mentioned, he was he's fifth, 15 points behind. He's driving for the team Andretti Autosport that swept the road course races here last year. Grosjean started on the pole here, um, actually both races in 2021 with uh, Dale Coyne Racing. He's with Andretti. He's got two poles already this year. He's finished second twice this year. He's got five runner-up finishes um, in his career. The only thing is he hasn't closed. Practice, he was only 16th. Andretti, as I just mentioned, they swept the month of May or the road course races last year. None of their cars are in the top 10 in practice. So that's something to watch, uh, which leads me to the next point, Andretti Autosport. 
Can they pull the hat trick? Can they win three straight races here? First practice didn't look like it. Colton Herta had a mechanical failure early, didn't even turn a lap. They got it fixed. He went around once slow on the final lap of practice just to get a, a lap in. Um, as far as nothing at speed, just to make sure everything was fixed. Um, so he was last in practice. Devlin Day Francesco was 22nd. Rojan 16th. Kyle Kirkwood, their best driver, he was uh, best driver in practice. He was 12th. So can they fix things? They got one more practice here at 1 o'clock. They qualify later. Right now it looks like they're playing from um, getting – on the brink of all of them getting eliminated in the first round, which would not be good here. Um, the only thing that could help them, though, which leads me to the next point, is rain. It rained here last year. That helped Colton Herta. Did not start in this. Uh, he, he was eliminated in the first round. Started 14th in this race last year, and he won it. Rain helped that. There's a low chance uh, for rain tomorrow, but it is in the forecast. In that race last year, we had 471 passes and only 75 laps. That's more than Formula One has in the last several years combined. The previous high was 269. Among those 471 passes, 362 were for position. The previous high was 198. And among those 362, 142 passes happened in the top 10 in the rain race. Do we get that tomorrow? Does Andretti need that to help get them back forward? We'll see. But that is one of the things I'm watching is the weather and as rain um, help spice up this show tomorrow. The next thing is row four. I know that's odd. We don't know who's going to be there yet. But the reason why that's a factor is, uh, which is also factors into the Andretti thing, 12 of the 13 races here have been won by a top eight starter. And that includes the, uh, the annual trips when we come back to the Speedway, uh, either in the summer and the fall, if we did 2020. Four of the six were from the front row. Um, three of those four are from second place. However, just one pole winner has won here in the last eight tries. The last four May races, or July in 2020, three of them have been run, one from row four, either seventh or eighth. Colt Herta was the only outlier. He won for 14 last year. That was on rain. Uh, the strategy, he won off his rain tires to slick thoroughly. That track position and that decision helped him get to the lead and he stayed there the rest of the day. So a lot of you may be wondering, well, what's row four have to do? Why is that row the most consistent winner here lately? Well, it's because of tire strategy. This track, if it doesn't rain, the red tires don't fall off much here. They're kind of the preferred tire. So in qualifying, if you make the fast six, you're going to use that extra set of reds to start as far up as you can. You want the pull. No matter what the stats say, even the pull winner hasn't won, has won once in the last eight tries, you still want to get the pull. I mean, then you get the one bonus point. I just talked about how points are so at a premium. So you want the pull, so you're going to use the red tires. The guys that are starting seventh on back, they, they haven't used that tire. So they've got an extra set compared to the fast six. So they could use that in the race. Two fresh sets of reds are better than one set fresh, one set of reds. That usually helps you in the end. So I'm going to watch row four tomorrow. Um, I'll watch who qualifies there and watch that row tomorrow and see if that trend holds true. Another thing to watch are the sophomore drivers. I watched them earlier in the year. It paid off. Kirkwood won the race. Um, he's in Kirkwood's in the car that Rossi won the last time out here last July. Grant, I said he was close in practice, but he's the best Andretti car. Callan Mylott qualified seventh here uh, last year, finished eighth. He's been on these track types of tracks. I'm watching him. David Malukas, he's been here plenty. He finished fourth. Uh, no, I'm sorry. He started 11th. He finished 12th in this race last year. Um, so I'm watching him, but the one I'm watching, the, ma- the main one out of that group, in the fourth score driver class, the sophomore class, Christian Lundgaard. This has been a very strong track for him. Uh, this is where he made his IndyCar debut. Uh, in 2021, he started fourth, finished 12th. Last year, started eighth and started sixth in two races, finished ninth and second, respectively. Last week or two weekends ago at Barber, he fast, qualified in the fast six, finished six. He comes in with a lot of momentum. And he was just P2 in practice. Or no, P, yeah, P2 in practice that we just had. So he looks good. He's fast. The team performs well here. So he's a driver I'm definitely going to be watching um, tomorrow as far as also the, the entire sophomore class. But he's one of them that you're going to want to watch. Um, and the next thing is, is Penske. It, it's interesting that Penske's got 18 Indy 500 wins. I believe he has 18 or 19 Indy 500 poles. Bunch of championships. He's never, since he's got the keys to this place, he's never won a race in May. That's his big thing here. He loves Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He loves Indy 500. Um, prior to him owning this place, they won this May race five out of six years. 
since he's taken the keys to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NCC IndyCar Series, he's over three. Not only in this race, but the Indy 500 too. So what can they do tomorrow? Scott McLaughlin just won the last time out at Barber. They had two cars on the podium. They've won two of the last three races entering this weekend. Scott McLaughlin was just fourth in practice. Uh, Will Power was ninth. Joseph Newgarden 15th. What can this group do on Saturday? Can they give the captain, Roger Penske, his first one in the game? Obviously, the drivers want to win here any time of the year, but there's just something different about winning at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the month of May. That also propels, gives you a lot of momentum moving forward for the rest of the, the oval track activities. So, can Penske turn it around and take up their first May win and get the third one in four races on the season going into the Indy 500? That remains to be seen, but it's one thing I want to see tomorrow and see how they perform. Some sleepers to watch. Um, obviously, just mentioned Lungard, the sophomore drivers, Jack Harvey. Strong track for him. He's got two podiums here before. He was fifth in practice. Uh, Graham Ray Hall was 13th in practice. That's three Ray Hall cars in the top 13. Usually they're they're pretty far off in practice. They never qualify well. Every, they always race well, but it's a they're always starting from behind. By the time they get the, the good finishes, they've they've been so far back they just don't have time to get all the way to the front. So I'm curious now that they've got the speed it's shown early. Can they sustain that speed? And if they start up front, can they finish it off and get their first win since um, 2020 Indy 500? Put Takuma Masato here, quickly enough, right here in the background. Um, we won this race, so what can they do? So I'm also going to watch those guys as a sleeper um, and just see how the rest of the weekend plays out. we got one more practice here in an hour, qualifying later in the day. The race is tomorrow, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, NBC, Green Flag, 3.45. Um, so it should be a fun weekend. Thank you for tuning in. We'll have more videos out here throughout the month. Uh, probably lots of NASCAR coverage. Even when we talk, we'll probably with this go in the background. But uh, again, subscribe to the Prime Sports Network. Like these videos. Like our NASCAR videos. Uh, like all the videos. The more likes you get, the more uh, um, the algorithm helps us get this seen by even more people. So I just thank you for your time. Uh, welcome, Mayas here, Waves fans. Uh, welcome aboard. I uh, hope you enjoy the time. Thank you.